The current GLP-1 medications that we have on the market for managing obesity are Saxenda, Wagovi, also known as Ozempic, and Zepbound, also known as Maugero. But today, we are dishing on a new up-and-coming molecule that is GLP-1 based. It's still a little ways from coming to market, but is showing some pretty remarkable results thus far. This guy is called Retitrutide. But before I dive into the data around retitrutide, let's just do a quick overview on the other guys that are already here on market. So Saxenda and Wagovi are considered single hormone receptor agonists. They are mimicking the GLP-1 hormone that is naturally produced by our body when we eat food. What this hormone is, is it is a satiety hormone. It not only helps to manage our blood sugars, but it also goes up inside of our brain there and decreases our food seeking behavior. You having less drive and wanting of food ultimately makes it a bit easier for you to get into a calorie deficit and ultimately lose weight. Zepbound, on the other hand, is what we call a dual hormone receptor agonist. So it's not only acting and mimicking the GLP-1 hormone, but it also mimics a hormone that's produced by our body called GIP. And these two molecules together work synergistically to, again, manage our blood sugars, but also help us manage our weight. And as you can see in this lovely little graph right here, I've given you each molecule and the percentage of weight from baseline that was lost with each of these drugs. Saxenda on average led to a weight loss of about 8% from baseline, Wagovi was almost 15%, and Zepbound was almost 21%. As you can see, as each molecule has come out and onto the market, we've seen greater and greater amounts of weight loss that is occurring with each of these drugs. Now, as a quick aside, what I mean when I'm saying percent of weight loss from baseline is that say you're 250 pounds and you lost 21% of your baseline weight, what that means is you would have lost about 52.5-ish pounds or so, because that, or 21% of 250 pounds, is 52.5 pounds. Now, if you want more specific details on each of those molecules, Saxenda, Wagovi, and Zepbound, go and check out the links down in my description below. I've got multiple videos on each of those guys, but you can get a lot more details and in-depth discussion on those drugs there. But now, we have Retitrutide. And retitrutide is a triple hormone receptor agonist. And so, like the other guys, it mimics GLP-1, it mimics GIP, similar to Zepbound, but it also mimics the GCG hormone, or glucagon is the official name. And thus, retitrutide is being dubbed as the triple G molecule. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time going into what is glucagon and all the great things that it does, but in case you've ever heard of it before, you've probably heard in the context of diabetes. And traditionally, we have thought of glucagon as being kind of the counter-regulatory hormone to insulin. And so what I mean by that is that when the level of sugar in your blood is rising or just after you've eaten a meal, insulin is getting released in order to bring that level of sugar down. On the other side of things, if your blood sugar levels are low or too low, glucagon then gets released to bring those blood sugar levels up. And in fact, we actually have medications that we use for individuals in diabetic emergencies where their blood sugar level drops way too low. They have an episode of hypoglycemia, we call it, and we have to give them glucagon in order to bring their blood sugar levels back up to potentially save their life. So while glucagon can increase your blood sugar levels, and I know some of you think that sugar is all terrible and bad and is ultimately what causes obesity, but but maybe, just maybe, obesity is a lot more complex and the various hormones in our bodies all kind of interact and do funny and weird things at different times and under different situations. Anywho, in the context of helping us to manage our weight with regards to retitrutide, glucagon seems to have a couple of unique mechanisms that not only further potentiate and act synergistically with the GIP and GLIP aspects of the other molecules and stuff, but glucagon has some other components where it might actually have some role in metabolism and that sort of thing. A future video on what exactly glucagon does, I will do in the future. And hey, if you're getting some value out of my videos here, 
Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well. Check out my OG members group where you can sign up and get the exclusive perks of some unique content that I'm putting together for you guys. As well, I do a members only live once a month where you can come and ask all of your specific questions and I will answer them in real time. All right, enough of the semantics. Let's actually dive into the data of this phase two randomized controlled trial where they looked at comparing retitrutide compared to a placebo. And so what they did in this trial is they gathered up about 340 individuals, all of them having obesity or overweight, and they then split them all into about seven different groups, giving them various doses of retitrutide, and one group was given a placebo. And they then followed them for a period of 48 weeks to see ultimately what happened. Now, as a quick aside here, this was a phase two trial. So what that means is there's going to be a lot more groups than what we usually see in, say, a phase three trial. The reason for that is one, they wanna try and figure out what's the best and safest dosage and also the best kind of titration schedule and that sort of thing for the future trials that they do. They also want to figure out just how effective this medication is in treating the specific condition we're looking at. So in this case, it was obesity. So overall, it was a smaller trial. It went for a shorter period of time and it's going to lead to the phase three trials, which are currently ongoing right now, which are gonna give us a lot more data and information looking at a much bigger population and will really tell us the true effects of what this medication is going to do and ultimately are gonna be what get this medication potentially to market. All right, let's now talk about some of the data that they actually found in this trial. And so I have a lovely little graph here that came from the study itself. And so what you can see here is that retitrutide, even at the one milligram once a week dose, there was about a 9% weight loss from baseline, but at the highest dose of 12 milligrams once per week, what we saw was nearly 25% weight loss from baseline. And based on all of those lines there, it looks like they hadn't even plateaued yet. So if the trial had gone on beyond 48 weeks, we may very well have seen an even greater amount of weight loss with this medication. And if we then flip to my next graph here and we compare the results of retitrutide one milligram and retitrutide 12 milligram, both of those are the bottom bars there, to the other three molecules that are currently on the market, you can see that retitrutide is quite an effective medication even at its lowest dose. But wait, there's more. So I have another graph here that is kind of showing the amount of individuals within each dosage or group, if you will, that lost greater than or equal to 5% of their baseline weight. For the people that were at retitrutide 8 milligrams and retitrutide 12 milligrams once per week, you can see that 100% of the people in each of those dosage groups lost greater than 5% of their baseline weight. So that means every single human in this trial that was given the drug at those dosages got a benefit. They lost some amount of weight. Now, yes, that was still a small number of people. It was only about 130 individuals in total that were in the eight milligram and 12 milligram groups. But seeing a result of 100%, like everybody gets a benefit, we, we don't see things like that in, in drug trials and in this kind of level of science. Like it's just, it's unheard of. And so that in itself is a pretty crazy result. And yes, exciting and stuff like that, but it kind of gives me, well, we'll talk a little bit more about kind of some of my concerns as we go along here. So that was all of the good. What about the bad? And hey, you beautiful people, if you want more information about the specific GLP-1 molecules that are currently on the market and want like a piece of paper, something actually real that you can take and chat with your primary care provider or your friends, family, whatever, be sure to check out the link down below where you can sign up for my email list and get my PDF of the GLP-1 molecules sent to your inbox and you can have all of the information that you need to know about dosing and what have you. It is all there contained in one single page, so be sure to check it out.
Well, first and foremost, we didn't see any kind of wacky and wonderful side effects come up. There was no increased risks of cancers, there was no paralyzed stomachs, and there was no increased risk of mental health issues. There definitely was the typical GI side effects that we see with this class of medication, so very comparable to what we see with Wagovi, Zepbound, and that sort of thing. That's going to be things like nausea, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea, and so on. The one thing that did come up that is certainly something that we're going to kind of want to watch out for and keep an eye on is that about 5.6% of the individuals that were taking retitrutide experienced a cardiac arrhythmia. Now, I know that sounds like a couple of big scary words. Cardiac means heart, arrhythmia means irregular heart beating essentially. And so yes, that can be something that can be scary in very severe situations. In the case of retitrutide here, mostly what we were seeing is people, some people experienced palpitations and increased heart rate or tachycardia to the point that they reported it to the trial researchers. What we did see is that as the dose of the retitrutide was increased, there was a greater chance of that, but over time what ultimately happened is that there was an initial increase and then over time as they went on the drug for longer, the heart rate level started to come back down. Now we already know that the other GLP-1 medications can increase heart rate. The increases in heart rate we saw here were a little bit more so and likely because of that glucagon molecule. And while we don't have all of the pieces of the puzzle with the glucagon piece of things, what we do know is that despite Wagovi, Zepbound, and stuff like that increasing some individual's heart rate, we know that those drugs do actually provide a benefit to the heart. And so while we may be seeing this effect kind of occurring, it might not be that bad of a thing. It might be that we need to slow down how quickly we increase the dose. There's a lot of questions that are kind of unanswered right now, but overall it is a yellow flag, I would say. Not a red flag, but a yellow flag. I want more data. I want to see it kind of teased out a bit more in the bigger phase three trial and what that actually is going to mean for individuals that may be put on this medication. Now, the other side effect that occurred in this trial that I'm much less optimistic about and I think is really something important that we definitely need to talk about as these newer molecules come to market was that the, there were some people in this study who actually lost too much weight. And I know, how can, how can losing too much weight be a problem? Well, you see, the problem here is, is that A, if all of a sudden your BMI goes into the underweight category, you're essentially getting to such a low weight level that we're getting concerned about other health issues. Like, are you getting enough nutrition? Are you, you know, are you losing too much muscle mass? And that sort of thing. And I think that's definitely something we really need to focus on and really need to start changing the narrative around with some of these more powerful medications is that people need to still eat and consume nutritious food and do activity and preserve lean muscle tissue because all of those things are, are really what are going to make you healthy. Yes, seeing the number on the scale go down is, is great and wonderful. But that doesn't equal health. That doesn't translate into you living longer or anything like that. And so it is definitely a concern. It is something we need to really start thinking about. And we need to, again, stop being so focused on the number on the scale. Now, this is definitely a topic for a future video, but something that I want to plant the seed with you nonetheless is to really start thinking about you know, what, what is the goal that you're striving for here? Are you trying to lose as much weight as possible? To, to do what? What is that actually gonna mean for you? Are you actually, you know, limited in mobility? Are you actually not able to do all of the things that you wanna do in living your healthiest life at your current weight? What will more weight loss or being at a lower weight really mean? And will it actually mean something for you? Or does it mean something for what everybody else you think needs or wants for you? So that is some food for thought. Definitely an idea I need to tease out and pull together in, a, in another video in a lot more detail. We will certainly put that together and I'll let you know when it's coming out. But that is it, and that is all you beautiful people. That is Retitrutide, a new GLP-1-based medication that is currently in the pipeline. It has now completed the phase two trials. So the next step is to go through the phase three trials, the larger, longer, much more robust studies and trials to really tell us what are gonna be the effects and benefits of this potential medication. 
So right now we can't draw too many conclusions. It all looks good and stuff like that, but those studies need to be done to really know what exactly we're dealing with. And ultimately, while those studies are going on, they're probably not gonna be wrapping up until 2026 or so. And that means retitrutide probably won't be available on the market and approved until late 2026 into 2027. And of course, as more data becomes available, I will be sure to share it with you so you can be up to date on all the comings and goings of these various molecules. Until next time, you beautiful people, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below as well. Check out my YouTube membership page, the OG member selection. What you get there is you're going to get a monthly members exclusive live with myself where you can come and ask your questions in real time. As well, I'm going to be having a whole bunch of new content coming out for the OG members that you can check out and get to firsthand knowledge and experience to help you on your weight management journey. Check me out on all my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. We're on the tick, the talk, the gram, you name it, we are out there. So be sure to go and give me a follow on those platforms as well. And as I always like to sign off, please remember that it's going to be those small tweaks that lead to the massive peaks.